Hi, how's it in the name of Christ? How are you doing? It's your girl Crank. Hey, Kikarabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're stellar and I hope you're in a neat little bunch. If you're not, welcome to the party. Is that just not the story of our lives? Um, let me just put some caveats out there. Kindly look out for my captions. They're not, they are not always accurate. They sometimes use a small g for God. They're sometimes irreverent. Therefore, they are misspelled. Sometimes they are the wrong word altogether. That's not me. I would not have chosen to do things that way. One day, God willing, in the future, I will adjust it. But I seriously doubt there is a future. Uh, next thing, I'm very potentially wearing application makeup. If I am, you'll know. If I'm not, you'll also know. Um, it tends to bounce off and on my face. Let's just put that out there. And then thirdly, I have a segment. I just want to get this out of the way because it's super crispy early now in the morning. Uh, like it's late, essentially. Like I need, uh, yeah, this is not going to be a long part. Because I had to yet again do emergency shorts and um, they, they, they took time. Anyway, whatever. Cool beans and bananas. I'm pinching my cheeks to bring forth a flush to display that I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. Don't take a jab at me. When you prick me, I bleed. The intention is to achieve some kind of a flush or a blush. If it comes through, great. If it doesn't, tomorrow's another day. Let's move on. Okay. That shows that I've got blood in my body. Okay. Cool. So today's the 15th of uh, uh, June 2024. It's actually the 14th because I've skipped over into the next day. Um, and it's the first day that I'm off my fast and it doesn't really feel any different. I'm still under a lot of a demonic attack because that's just the story of my life. The emergency shorts that I was doing were actually to discuss the demonic attack on my workouts. Like yesterday I had, like I think I had a whole bunch of energy and then today I struggled to move my body. But I nonetheless covered the time because I'm that girl. Uh, that's what the Lord does through me. Okay, y'all. Um, I, I uh, Doesn't anybody miss normalness? doesn't anybody miss normalness the anyway look i'm dealing with so much satanic activity with people so severely involved in occult magic that like for me the big question is just the simplicity the rudimentary time of waking up in the morning existing and then going to bed at night without spiritually manipulating the outcome of people's lives like does do people not miss that and was there not something that caused a, a shock like a fear like a, a scary bone <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, a scary bone, if you will. In people, when you learned that witchcraft actually works, when you could just shatter people's plans, when you could, when you found out that it was possible to do that, why was that not scary? And why did that not make you ask if there is a God? Because if there is no God, who is to protect people from that kind of power? Anyway, look, I'm tired of speaking about the occult and people in that kingdom. But I'm not done. I'm pretty sure I'm not done. Probably gonna rock up. <sighs> Sorry. I'm probably gonna rock up tomorrow and speak about it again. And the next day and the next day. Because they will keep attacking me. Harassing me. Until the Lord comes for his bride. This is not a sustainable concern. This here which has been done to the earth. Is not doable anymore. The level of dedication by occult practitioners to Christians. The fact that it does not educate them to realize that there is something about christ I, like i'm just um i don't know guys you know this is africa like yo you know i find everything that is being spoken about in this country worthless i i don't understand why anybody even bothers like there are a whole bunch of like recently we've had elections and now there's like a coalition government happening blah blah what what and there's like a couple of youtubers from south africa of all different races that are busy covering this on their channels and one dude has got like 119,000 views on a video where he is speaking about the coalition government and there are like i said 119,000 interested souls who are happy to watch that video and i'm just looking at the state of south africa from a spiritual vantage point and i'm like what is the point what is the point like what exactly is the point why are you busy listening or why are you speculating making political commentary on what is happening in your countries why do you have any interest at all when this place is going to disappear when the thing that can avert that disappearance is not being averted when people are not actively trying to prevent it like just now right while i was doing the shorts that were emergency because i got attacked during exercise i, I can be jocose i'm very satirical so i was making jokes of course as normal but really and truly I, I barely could move my body during exercise today and i strove anyway and at the end of exercise i decided to do 15 shorts 
uh, to basically just speak of my struggles. And I made a joke out of it, but it is, it was a real attack. Those were real attacks on my person. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. After that workout, I then I go and I take a shower as normal, blah, blah. I come here and I sit down. And the Lord then floods to me because all I could think about was, who lives in this filth? Who is just walking around being normal in South Africa? Who gets on a bus in the morning, goes to school, comes back, and does not pick up that there was something eerie and severely, terribly, tragically wrong with this picture? Who? I don't know who is living a normal life, guys, in this country. I seriously do not know if there are people who are truly self-deluded into imagining that this is a going concern. This is unsustainable. What is being done to South Africa? Where you are grabbing hard-working people and you are th literally throwing them on the street, shoving them in corners in favor of some lazy freaks who can wave a magic wand. As I was thinking about stuff like that, the fact that the lazy are taking over the country. People who have not basically earned their keep are running this country. They are in every corner of society and they spiritually manipulate everything out of the way. I'm sorry if you find me disgusting for blowing my nose, but that's just it. Uh, it is what it is, right? So I'm not about to go and pause for that. Anyway, whatever. Yeah. Okay, cool. While I was busy just ruminating on the insanity of this country, I then heard basically a word of knowledge coming from the Lord. <laughs> guys, that's like it. I told you guys that South Africa is going to cease to be a country. It's going to cease to be a nation. I've been saying that time and time again. This country is going to stop. It's not going to exist in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ as a country. There will not be a nation called South Africa in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. It is going to cease to exist. And as I was sitting here, just thinking about all these travesties happening all over the country, all over the world, well, the, the country really, it's more like South Africa. Like just how dirty this place is. It is Hila. Do you understand? Mm. I then get a word of knowledge where I hear their entire it's like there was a discussion from another realm that was uh, that i was privy to like i was a fly on the wall a, a, a discussion by by bodies by beings by beings not by it wasn't like a human conversation it was like a it was like a conversation being had by people in another dimension like they were not here so and all i could conclude was that it was a conversation being had in heaven by souls there, by people there, by people there making an observation of what's going on on the earth. I can't really say that there were angels or even God because it's like there were normal people like me and you talking, but they were certainly coming from a different realm. It's like they were having a futurist, how can I describe it? They were like having a conversation almost as if though they had understanding of what's coming and they've seen it. It's like they were coming from a vantage point where there is no time and they, they have access or are privy to post time. They were privy to information that was post time. In other words, information that is made available to them precisely because they're no longer confined by time, which is why the only thing that I could conclude was that it was like some dead people, like some saints that are in heaven who have been given access or who are privy to, I guess, making observation of the things going on on the earth, right? Now, what do I believe about what saints do when they get to heaven? I know that they don't have incorruptible bodies yet. They're in spirit form presently. Do they see what's happening on the earth? I do believe that some of them, if they want to, can look on what's happening down below. I don't believe that like angels, they can, that, that the Lord will allow them permission to come to the earth for a mission because that's not biblical but i do believe that they can have access to information in heaven where they're at right now as to what's going to happen in a country tomorrow what's going to happen in a village the next day like that I, I do believe that they have they, they, they they've got insight into prophecy because they are apart from time they are in that realm and the reason why i believe that is because in the book of revelation we know that saints and holy angels pretty much all of heaven's forces all of heaven's legions um watch the earth as things are being unfolded there in the book of revelation we know that heaven's citizens watch the plagues that are being thrown on the earth meaning that it is possible for people in heaven to look at what's going on on the earth how do they watch i mean god is the one that enables that probably through some means i don't know how like screens i don't know like just an ability to be able to see the earth from a heavenly vantage point uh just the book of revelation 
alone, the stuff going on there tells me that it's possible for bodies in heaven, in, like beings in heaven, people, human, as well as maybe angel, angelic beings have got as, um, access to understanding as to the earth's affairs. If they so want to find out, I believe they can find out. I know that that's a thing because it's also written somewhere in the Old Testament that in the in eternity, in eternity life, in our forever home, um, it is going to be possible for saints for all of eternity, if they want, to actually go and look on to hell. Like as in to see the lake of fire and those who are burning therein. It is not so separated and so far removed from us that we will never see it. it it's literally going to be a tourist destination. Ish, I, I wish I could actually find um, that scripture to prove to you that that's like a whole thing. Anyway, just the ability to be able to basically go and watch hellfire like you were watching sea life in an aquarium. The fact that Christians, saints forever are going to be able to do that tells me that it's possible for heaven's citizenship to watch do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, it is possible for, for, for Heaven's citizenship to watch uh, things that are happening in somewhere very far, somewhere else, in another, on another planet, uh, on another like um, created area, in another created zone for the purpose of purposes of God, uh, for Christians to basically gaze upon the solar system from where they're at in Heaven. They can look at the planets. They can look at what do you call this? Hellfire for eternity. They can look at uh, if they want to go see it for the day, they can look at uh, Earth, therefore. They can gaze upon the affairs of the Earth from heaven without, of course, inter intervening or interrupting or pro poking and prodding um, at them, without touching them, without influencing or impacting them, because that is the job of angels only. Angels are the ministering spirits that have a job here to do for um, for the world, for Earth's citizens, for human beings. Angels have got a job for us here to do what they do. Human beings cannot do that. We are appointed unto to die once and thereafter is the judgment and we stay in heaven. But it, I do believe it's possible for us to see what's going on down below. And I had, I, I guys, I had a, a vision or word of knowledge right now. It was a combination of of words and con, like it was a conversation being had by two people. One of which was a woman and the other was a man. And the two of them, they, they were, they were, it's like they were giving like South African citizens but dead like not dead i can't really say that they felt dead but they did not feel like they belonged to this realm it's like they were late south africans or they were south africans that i can only conclude must be late because they're in heaven and due to i guess their historical country that they used to come from prior to passing away they have an interest in looking at south africa from heaven where like you know among the things that pique their interest would be how south africa is go how things are going to unfold for the country Ew, guys, as in, I'm trying to find this portion of, of God's word. I don't know where under heaven. I'm going to look for it. I don't know why under heaven I did not, um, what do you call this? Memorize it. Like, because I know that it, it's a, I've been looking for it in the, like, I, I, one second. I found it. It's in Isaiah in the end. I knew that it was at, at the end of Isaiah. I don't know why I didn't just go over there. Okay, uh, so I'm going to read to you proof, evidence of the fact that we as Christians in eternity, saints, redeemed souls that are going to enjoy eternal life, are going to be privy to hellfire, to where it is that the unregenerate are going to go. Those that rejected God, we can, if we want to, like a tourist destination, like I said, it's like going to Sea World. it's like going to an aquarium, just to watch some sharks and some whales that have been captured, swimming around for our own pleasure, and then go home, like picnicking in front of hellfire, is totally going to be an eternal tourist destination for saints. Y'all, y'all who are out here messing with God, dabbling with dark arts, doing strange things, you have no idea what under heaven is banked for you. Even the saints that you persecuted are going to be able to watch you as you burn, if they want to. They are going to burn for all of eternity in front of God and his holy angels. But saints, if they wanna, I do, like, it's clear, not I do believe, it's clear in the scriptures that we're gonna be able to if we wanna see them, if we wanna. It probably is not going to be the best tourist destination to go to, but we get to if we want to. Hey, and you're messing with witchcraft. You're still out here hanging over a cauldron. Since you're still doing human sacrifice rituals. You're still drinking blood. You're, you're still cutting up some animals in the name of some strange gods. You are still casting spells on your ex-girlfriend's ministry so that she does not get ahead. So that you don't have to get to watch her get married to another dude. You're still doing that. 
when that's what's gonna happen to you forever where it is that that same girlfriend can if she wants just go and see how you're doing in hellfire forever and you won't be able to get out and she is also not going to wince because it's going to be such a final and comprehensive complete sense of justice in her in an incorruptible body that she will not wince at the observation of your torment right now we are troubled by the sight of car accidents and people's blood being shed because we're in this fallen flesh but when you have the finality of justice in an incorruptible body you will not wince at the eternal condemnation the observation of it of somebody that had it coming that's just the nature of justice and when the lord in invested in us incorruptibly we will not be sorry for you it's what you must understand and you still are just bewitching your girlfriend your exes future oh uh, uh, it's again guys you are still standing in front of some chick on the internet that you don't know that you're jealous of because you messed up and you went and married some random in the occult and now you've got hiv because he did a sex ritual came back home and gave it to you and based on your experiences you are busy blocking a woman's future so you don't ever have to get to say if at all i had waited on jesus christ i would not be in this compromised position today like all in the spirit of relieving yourself from the prospect of seeing someone do really well in christ that's what's good you are prepared to have that same person that you will have worked tooth and nail to harass. Look at, look onto you. One day, like looking at a sea lion at the aquarium. Like looking at a whale at the aquarium. Like looking at some spectacle, some show at a circus. Only to go home at the end of the day while you are caged. And you will forever be in that environment. Like what is the point? Anyway, I'm, I'm going to get to the point. So in Isaiah 66, the very end of Isaiah 66, uh... It, it is written, y'all, you know, I, I don't know why people don't repent. Like, you know, sometimes I listen to my videos, sometimes not all the time, because I frankly find my own vo voice cringy sometimes, right? Yeah, but every so often I listen to my videos and the way that it's so, like the information, the, the, the way that the, just the delivery of the work that I do is so poignant. There is just so much fear that ought to be inspired in people from listening to certain of my videos. And yet, and yet they just, they... Go back to the drawing board. Uh, like, I don't know how anyone can listen to my videos from start to end. Like I just I don't know how anyone can watch any of my videos, especially where I'm a little bit more somber and I'm not like singing and all that jazz. And and go back to the drawing board after listening to that and go and, and go back and do witchcraft. What's going on? You know, like the Bible makes it clear that the hearing ear and the seeing eye both are from the Lord. When you are that blind to a point where there is no holy fear. That gets inspired in you upon hearing something so scary as that. I mean, yeah, look, it makes sense. There's this dude that I dated ever so briefly for like five seconds when I was working at MTN. I've only ever been with two men as a Christian in 13 years of being single. And he was the first one. The next one was the dude from America. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. This guy, Nele Maloy, that's why we, we broke up because he was dark. He was not saved and he offended me. He insulted me. He was mean-spirited. Anyway, whatever. But he was involved in witchcraft and he tried to use witchcraft to handle me for dumping him. All that jazz, whatever. But this guy, yes, like it, but he was always sitting outside of Paul Washer's sermons. I listened to Paul Washer's shocking youth sermon once and I was freaked out for eternity. I was scared for eternity. The fear of God was spoken into me permanently by that sermon. And that dude had not only listened to that sermon yeah, Paul Washer, but he was into reformed theology. So he had listened to them all. He had listened to Paul Washer. He had listened to uh, Stephen Lawson, John MacArthur. He had listened to the Puritans. Yes, like it. But those 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 sermons on 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 YouTube that use a voiceover because the preachers are dead. He is his favorite pastor was Charles Spurgeon. Oh, guys, how do you listen to Spurgeon? How do you listen to Paul Washer? How do you listen to John MacArthur and, and Vody Buckham and Stephen Lawson? And like, I could, like, how do you listen to those men? How do you listen to Tim Conway? And then like, go back and freaking do witchcraft. Like, I don't get it. I just, I don't get it. I do not get it for the life of me. But then again, you know, like I said, the hearing ear and the seeing eye both are from the Lord. Like a person that can sit in front of so much sound doctrine, listen to so much truth, not be carried to and from by every wind of health, wealth, and prosperity doctrine. This dude was not sitting in front of Kenneth Copeland. He was not sitting in front of those preachers. If anything, both him and I used to call out apologetically Rayma and Grace Bible Church. We used to talk about how fluffy they were, both of us. I get we dated briefly. Hey, how a man like that can hey, Joe, justify somehow going in the premises of a Sangoma and casting a spell on a woman to handle her? How he can go into the premises of a sangoma and 
juju a woman, love spell a woman, how you sit and the pole wash your sermons and, and then go and love spell a woman. How, what happened there? Like, I, I don't get it. But like I said, maybe I should get it because the hearing ear and the seeing eye both are from the Lord. There are people who can sit under some of the most sober preachers like hellfire and brimstone preachers that will scare the living shocking daylights out of you and still go to hell and you know i should have known because tim conway was one of the first preachers that i ever listened to that ever convicted me very strongly um of just sin generally just the the, the narrow road that leads to life that few they be that fine and one of the sermons that team tim conway preached was to some youth at camp like it was a youth camp and he was uh, called to preach there at that youth camp and he told those kids that some of you listening to this sermon today are going to be in hellfire remembering every last one of the words that i spoke today they will be going in your mind on a, on a loop as you burn for eternity because you will not truly give your lives to jesus christ and it sent shivers down my spine it it, it it scared me it did it scared me but tim conway already knew that which i would i guess take uh, many more years to finally wrap my head around that there are people who can sit outside such sound preachers there are people who can sit outside hellfire and brimstone like severely convicting men and women of god evangelizing speaking the words of fire of life and explaining everything that needs to be explained the best way they know how by the anointing of the holy spirit walk out of there and still consult a psychic still consult the medium still do witchcraft still go and you try corobella hey, hey guys yo none of that stuff it freaks me out i get scared at, at the at the prospect of that like it, it it's scary because it's like why aren't you wincing why do you have no fear of god why do you have no fear of god why after listening to so much convicting truth about the lord are you not afraid to sin in that capacity what why, why aren't you scared now you could die from a heart attack standing in front of a psychic why are you not freaking out at idolatry but tim conway did see it and i should have known that it would take a minute for me to see it, right? The hearing ear and the seeing eye both are from the Lord. God is the one that gives understanding, conviction. God is the one that creates fear in a person of him. Judas, <laughs> I mean, it happened with Judas. He was with Jesus. He was a disciple of Jesus. He hung out with Jesus and he still betrayed him. It's it's just like, it's scary. It is scary. It's, it's scary, but it happens. It's easy. It, it's like, yo, oh, guys, not everybody has gone a fear of heights. But when I personally go at the top of a, a mountain, not a mountain, what do you call this? Like a, a building, a tall building. There is, a, a, you know, like my stomach uh, feels some kind of way where when I look down over a balcony, I, I, it's just, it's so scary. I, I cannot, I cannot. Even the thought of it right now, I feel that sense of disquiet in my stomach because it's just, it's so far down and there's so much death to be endured if anybody should fall down there. So I really hate looking down. I really do hate looking down when, when structures are just rising and rising and rising. I, I like to keep my, my eyes off what could potentially be the distance from where I'm at to the ground. I would much rather not have to look at it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not a crippling fear that I have of heights, but it's enough for me to avoid ledges largely. And, and I, I don't consider it sightly to just look over a city from a skyscraper and just take it in. I, I, I couldn't. It's like it's, it's too daunting. For me it is too daunting i would never ever get an apartment on the 11th floor on the 12th 13th floor for those reasons because whoa, whoa like anything could happen like there's just so many accidents that could happen yeah type setup thing anyway that that feeling in your stomach you know that sense of foreboding when you approach something that you're very scared of or spiders that one is like my bl and, and all of a fear arachnophobia just to uh, like approach one i could never a big one, especially like a, a whole chunky gargantuan spider, like a terrain. I would never approach it. I would always flee from it, even if it's an apparently irrational fear, because the spider is more likely scared of me than I could ever be of it. Yet, just the fear alone is enough to stay me from playing around with that, from playing around with that. It creates that thing in my stomach. Yeah, that's what's good. I have got a fear, a mild one of heights, a moderate one of heights, and a gargantuan one of, of spiders, of arachnids at all. And therefore I avoid them. Yeah, well, I found a new fear when I got born again in 2011. His name is Jesus. I found a fear of God. And as a result, therefore, I, I have a great deal of consternation and a great deal of 
trepidation upon walking in certain things that I know do not please him. I am scared all the time. I have such a big fear of God that I go out of my way to avoid ministries where people are busy talking about trips to hell, experiences about... Yeah, like I don't disbelieve every hell testimony. There are people who write all of them off altogether, but I don't disbelieve them all. But every so often, I will take a bite like I did today of a testimony of somebody that was shot twice and then was sent to hell, but then was resuscitated in the hospital and lived to tell the story. And guys, every time I come out of those testimonies, I am papnat. I am so scared, even for my own soul. I am scared. I am scared in a way that makes me basically feel like even the assurance of salvation that I have is not really sure. I, I am trepidatious. I'm scared that I might not be saved. Those testimonies make me feel like I'm not saved sometimes because I, there's just not enough clean I can ever do to please God. So I avoid them. Because I know that we are saved, thankfully, by grace, not of anything we've done. But you know, you show, you do. You essentially display that you're born again when you bear fruit. So it's about living a life consecrated to God and beating your flesh to submission by the Spirit, putting to death the deeds of the body. But you've got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You have got to constantly test yourself to see if you're in the faith. And watching such ministries as those puts me in check. And it makes me second guess my salvation because that's just the nature of a true saint. You will have consternation even every so often, despite having an assurance of salvation, every so often you will feel like, am I really? Am I really? And that's what it means to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's what it means to test yourself to see if you're in the faith. Who knows? Lest you should fail the test. Demas leaves because he was never of us. So I understand thoroughly that even though I'm not saved by works, but it is grace, faith, that certain works evidence that a person is not born again. Certain works show that a person is not saved when you just keep when you just keep on going back to drugs when you just keep on going back to fornication every week you're busy sleeping with your boyfriend no conviction of sin at all you 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 have some inkling of understanding of what the bible has to say but there is nothing in you making you repent you are literally taking god's grace for granted you are walking in presumptuous sin every week you're in the nightclub but you are just being you call yourself a christian every week you're gossiping you're doing this basically you're living a life just as Sinful as everybody that does not even lay claim to knowing Jesus. Only difference is that you call yourself a believer. Live a life like that and you have no consternation in you at all that very potentially you are not saved. Your works might not save you, but certain perpetual sinful propensities evidence that you're not born again. When you are just constantly allowing yourself to pendulum, swinging left to right from Jesus to some extreme of darkness, you are lukewarm, you are flaccid, you are fluffy on that day, you are not born again. And when you do not have a trepidation, a fear to walk into the hut of a sangoma over and over and over and over again, when a woman doesn't want to be with you and you decide that you're going to use corobella, guys, you are not saved by works. True. But certain works display that you are never saved, that you are not born again. When you have no, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One brings understanding. When you have no consternation in your body, when there is no fear, when there is nothing causing you great disquiet when you are even thinking about something i guys where is the holy spirit he is the one that confirms that you are a son or a daughter of god and if he is not grieved severely to a point of succeeding to stay you from doing that because he can discipline you he mm. has not quickened you you are not saved you are not born again and when you're not born again you go to that place at death you go to hell why are you not scared of hell I guess the hearing ear and the seeing eye both are from the Lord. You take it for granted that you very potentially are not going there. Nothing in you freaks out that you are going there because you thoroughly don't think you're lost. If anything, likely everybody that has entered heaven has at some point doubted if at all they'll enter heaven because they have not had such a delusion of grandeur about their salvation that they have been nervous about making it. It is the scary cats, the ones who are always un 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 unsure of themselves that are the most pious because they're always testing themselves. But the ones that feel a, a strong sense of guarantee that I got this, they're the ones that wake up in torments like the rich man. At death, they find themselves in the outer darkness having imagined they are set. It's always the scary, uncertain, trepidatious, doubtful, shaky leaves that enter heaven and get told, well done, my faith, my good and faithful servant. Because there is a trepidation natural that comes inside a true believer that causes them that to... Even though they have an assurance of salvation, there is always that thing in them that is like, am I really, am I really? Test yourself to see if you're in the faith. We understand we are not worthy of God. And if you do not have a fear of him, you are not his. 
I could not understand how that dude, as when I found out that he was into witchcraft, I was like, Anjani, dude, how did you sit with me in front of these sermons, such, such, such Spurgeon on a loop, just listening to them? How did you sit next to me listening to that and not come out of that with fear? I attended, I used to go to a Baptist church where there was a cult operating inside, a whole cult, a whole coven. How did those people in that cult, in that church, just stand in front of gospel tracts, such Charles Spurgeon, and the resolutions of Jonathan Edwards, and then go back and do a seance against congregants. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. They lacked it. People can be in the presence of God and have no fear. I, I don't get it, but it happens. And I, I, I come here daily to try and invest that fear in people. And guys, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Because like I said, the hearing ear and the seeing eye both are from the Lord. The Lord is sovereign in salvation. That level of stubbornness, how recalcitrant, People can be towards God, Shem, Nyanzoela, but you are reprobate when you can be just outside so much convicting understanding and still cast spells, still experiment with witchcraft. I'm sorry, no, like, I don't know what's going on there, y'all, Maria Lutrel. I feel sorry for you. I really do. It's frustrating, but like, that whole frustration that I experience. It appears I'm not the only one because I, I overheard a conversation in what I would imagine to be heaven being had by what I would imagine to be late South African saints speaking about the eventuality of this country in a confused disposition. In and of themselves, they were creasing their foreheads on some, they're so arrogant. I will let you know what they said, but their general demeanor was one of creasing their foreheads until the end of, they have no idea what's coming. They don't know what they, look at what they're doing to Christians in their country. How about Sayyibur, what's coming? Proof that it is possible for saints in heaven to basically be privy to what's going on on the earth is here. In Isaiah 66 at the end, I will read from 22. Isaiah 66 verse 22, for as the new heavens and the new earth that I make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your offspring and your name remain. From new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh shall come to worship before me declares the Lord. And this is now, I get a new earth, new heaven. This is eternity. This is eternity. We are not millennial reign talking. We are not, we're, we're nowhere but in eternity. And this is what is written in Isaiah 66 from verse 24. And they shall, the, who's they? Us. Those who have inherited from new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh shall, all flesh, sorry, shall come to worship me, declares the Lord. So all this flesh that comes to worship the Lord, in this eternal plane this is what they're going to be able to see and they shall go out and look on the dead bodies of the men who have rebelled against me listen for their worm shall not die so these dead bodies are not dead bodies littered in on earthly streets that can be put in a grave the worms or the maggots of which that eat their flesh can die these are eternal worms who cannot die the ones described in the scriptures as the worm dieth not. And in that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for all of eternity. And the smoke of their torment rises up forever. Literally, Christians or resurrected saints are going to be able to watch hellfire as a tourist destination forever. If we want, of course, if we want, we don't have to. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to look at that, but I'm only speaking from this corrupted body. But it, it likely might be just a, po uh, a potent reminder of what God delivered us from. It might actually be just as cathartic as watching whales and sharks and dolphins swim around in an aquarium. It might be that cathartic to actually see souls burning for eternity because look at what you are doing to me. Look at what you're doing to us. Do you not imagine an incorruptible saint might very potentially consider it cathartic to watch you burn for an hour and then go home? Do you not think it might be cathartic? Imagine somebody finding your flesh that does not get consumed, the fire that does not get consumed, the worm that does not die, your rest that is day and night and the torment that you are in for all of eternity. Somebody finding that cathartic. Why would you take yourselves there? Why have you no fear of God? Guys, this is coming. Let's continue to read. 66, they start from 24. And they shall go out and look on the dead bodies of the men who have rebelled against me. For their worm shall not die. Their fire shall not be quenched. And they shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. Did you, did you, did you get that? Isaiah 66, those of you who say that the Old Testament is divorced from the New and there is no correlation therein, here is hellfire being described by Isaiah. Like, so you can see the supernatural 
nature of the Bible, a book that was written so, uh, so much more prior to the Gospels, describes the worm that does not die and the fire that is unquenchable. The fire that does not consume is described all throughout the, the, the Old Testament. And Christ just reverberated a whole bunch when he is here precisely because he knew how important it was to speak about. This is what your jealousy causing you to go and bewitch a woman into obscurity is going to achieve for you. You are going to be a dolphin in an aquarium observed for cathartic purposes for no other reason but to just gain a poignant reminder of what it is that God rescued us all from. And you are the thing that is being burned and you will not be rescued. You will not be saved. And you will very potentially also see, very potentially, you will also see the saints looking at you burn. And you think it's a joke today for you to just constantly keep going back to the drawing board bewitching some Christians. You will, go, We will go out and look on the dead bodies of the men who have rebelled against God. For their worm will not die and the fire will not be quenched and they shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. Go read Isaiah 66 yourselves, please. Isaiah 66, that's where that is across all different versions, just to verify that that's the total truth. Hellfire is going to be a tourist destination for saints. And you're going there, constantly going back to the drawing board, thinking that this here is going to end well for you. Well, let me then tell you what it is that these saints, I believe, is what, what Christians were saying about South Africa. This deadbeat nation that nobody's addressing the filth of how much it's out you're persecuting Christians. These South Africans, it was a South African man and a South African woman chilling in a different plane, a different realm. And all I could conclude was that it was heaven. And there were saints that, the saints that used to live here when they were alive. And they were saying to each other as they were conversing, being privy to the affairs of the earth. They were saying, are you listening to me? I am paraphrasing. All right. I can't exactly quote it verbatim. They were saying they have no clue that they're all going to get washed away by a tsunami. That's what they said. They have no clue that they're all going to get washed away in one fell sweep by a tsunami. A tsunami. I told you guys that South Africa is going to cease to be a country. And I did not know how that's going to happen. How the Lord is going to do it. I however did speculate that based on the seal judgments, there are stars that fall from heaven. Asteroids, in other words, very early on in the tribulation. And they fall, of course, some of them, never mind on mountains, but also in oceans. And coastal nations, some of them are going to get engulfed by wave, by, by waves. Some of them are going to get engulfed by waves. It's going to be a deluge. They're going to be flooded because of those asteroids that are falling into the ocean in the very early stages of the tribulation, the stars that fall from the sky that happen in Revelation 6. Go read it for yourselves, please. I'm not going to labor on it because I can't be long here, seeing as it's already whatever time it is in the morning. Mm, yeah. When they fall into the ocean, coastal nations are going to be hit really hard. They will be tsunamied in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. The Lord will restore and recover some of these nations some of them, but others he will very simply choose to leave underwater. I told you guys that I once got a dream of seeing river water or ocean water or whatever, right here at my mom's house. At On the feet though, it was on the feet. It had not covered, it, it, it had not deluged, it had not uh, submerged people or houses in Johannesburg, but it had gotten to the point of feet in Johannesburg. We are inland. Johannesburg is very much inland, whereas KZN, Western Cape, Eastern Cape, etc., you get my point. They're in the coastal regions. How South Africa is going to cease to be a nation has just been confirmed to me today that it's going to happen through a tsunami that I believe is going to happen as a result of stars falling from the sky in the very beginning of the tribulation in, I believe, the sixth seal, right? Judgment, where it is that upon some star falling very close to our coastal regions, it's going to engulf all of KwaZulu-Natal, all of, um, what do you call this, uh, uh, Eastern, Western Cape, etc., and it's going to go so far inland that the water is going to literally be on the tippy toes, on the toes of people living in Johannesburg. So basically everyone in coastal regions is likely going to pass away at the beginning of the tribulation. They're not even going to be given a chance to repent. And there's only going to be those that are inland that are going to be able to live. But the country will be so disarrayed as a result of this tsunami with many of the um, regions remaining underwater for months before it recedes. That's what's good that there will be no order and so therefore no life in South Africa. Remember I told you guys that I, I had a dream of food, not food trucks, but water trucks rocking up in communities, neighborhoods, suburbia, giving people water. What happened to irrigation systems likely this tsunami? What happened to our plumbing? Our, probably not only the tsunami, but probably also just famine, drought, like the Lord, the, 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 the horseman of the apocalypse that is um, famine, the black horse 
The one with scales. A quarter wheat for a denarius. A three quarts of a barley for a denarius and do not harm the oil and the wine. How it is that a fair man comes oftentimes is yes through war. Because that's already happened with the white horse. Through death. That's already happened with the red horse. But more than anything, through basically the Lord withholding rain. Because why would he continue to give you rain? And now you've got all the salt water that is going to be in, in rivers as a result of the tsunami. Therefore contaminating that which is fresh water for us to drink. To a point where water is now going to have to be rationed to South Africans. This land is going to be engulfed. And m most of the coastal citizens are going to pass away. And everybody else is going... Uh, the, a large majority of everybody else is going to pass away by collateral, not collateral, collateral damage too. But what I wanted to say was the aftermath, the effects. So basically they will die afterwards. They will be in the inlands, but what happened on the outliers is going to kill them eventually. Starvation, uh, calamity, looting, rioting, people killing each other, horsemen, the red one, the, the, the red horseman of the, of the apocalypse who is, uh, okay, men will slay one another. The, 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 the horseman that brings about death. Yeah, like uh, death in Hades is the pale horse, you get my point. But the one that causes mankind to go to war with each other, to take peace from the earth. The red horse. Y'all are going to kill each other, looting, all that jazz. It's coming. And I basically became privy to a conversation just now, today, as I was about to edit my shorts. Where it is that I overheard what I would, I could only conclude are dead saints. Well, they're more alive now than ever. That used to live here saying... Y'all are arrogant. They are privy to what's going on down below, seeing our persecution, just as curious as to why you have no fear of God, despite hearing the gospel, and have got understanding that there is going to be a tsunami that is going to obliterate South Africa and make it uninhabitable. You think you're not that bad. You are. You're so evil. South Africa, you are so evil that God is going to end you as a nation. He will have nothing to do with you in your entirety. That's how evil you are. Once the saints are gone, there's no need to salvage this place. There was so much witchcraft going on on the ground. There was so much Christian persecution going on on the ground. The level of insanity. Your little coalition government is not addressing the fact that there is a disease coursing through the veins of the country called sorcery because you are not focusing on the right issues. All you can do is get 119,000 people watching a YouTube channel uh, on somebody commenting on the coalition government between the DA, the ANC, and the IFP. Who cares? Don't nobody because none of those leaders are ever going to go and address what under heaven is truly killing South Africa. Some lazy, complacent randos are taking over the economy of the country at the expense and therefore grand travesty of those who are truly hardworking. I have been exsanguinated out of the economy of South Africa and stuff like this keeps happening. The worst people have got jobs. They're destroying the land and they have condemned the righteous while acquitting the wicked, which God considers to be an abomination. And the Lord has picked a great controversy with this entire country. And yet these pompous South Africans in their aloof disposition towards their own countrymen have no idea what's coming. Keep on sitting in your fluffy, flaccid, seeker sensitive churches. Aren't you convincing yourself that you are a Christian country when you do this to true Christians? Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Keep slapping women, mocking them for turning 40. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. When you're the ones that put them in a position to get to the age of 40 with no husband and with no children. Keep harassing a woman. And making her slave on YouTube. Unable to go anywhere. Unable to grow some kind of a followership that she might at least start making money from an alternative source. Seeing as South Africa refused to pay her a salary. Keep doing that. And recognize that you were supposed to do that. And your arrogance is being discussed in heaven as just that. Pompous. You are arrogant to think you can keep on going back to the drawing board. Especially Nina. In Shalekwazul. Recently, you endured a tornado. There's a whole big fat chunky nasty misogynistic cult operating that has spread its wings like satanic spawn with multiple progenies therein. Therefore, manufactured in other provinces, that have sought to take the country over to create some kind of a satanic patriarchy. Do you understand? Using magic by suffocating women like me. It started in Guazulu Natal. And when then you are getting all these floods, when then you are getting tornadoes, when South Africa is not known for tornadoes, for crying out loud. Yeah, I mean, goodness gracious, of course. The judgment would come to the most evil single province in the country. Then everything else will follow suit. So the tsunami is going to knock out, of course, Guazul, Natal and everything else. It is the single most wicked province in the whole of South Africa. Because a whole bunch of rubbish, Ikaleda, this cult that has born progeny of satanic spawn in all other provinces in South Africa, is being judged the most in the country. It, has, it is the biggest trembling 
single province in the nation and you don't see you don't see it for what it is nina in italy this satanic cult you don't even see utini your 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 quasi natal is being made to tremble daughter about like a drunkard and yet you don't anticipate that that is judgment from god well kezerin is just the beginning it's going to spread to everywhere else it is going to rear its ugly head in the inland and everywhere else in the coastal regions but the tribulation is going to amass for south africa the biggest devastation and it is going to be the way you're so irrelevant south africa in the grander scheme of things that you might understand you're going to get knocked out early in the tribulation early as in, in the seal judgments you are not going many of you most of you to be around even to experience the trumpet judge judgments and then the seven bowls of god's wrath you are going to largely be eradicated very early on like i said in the seal judgments those of you who are alive after this like ridiculous tsunami the best thing you can do for yourselves is get yourselves set apart to be christian love the lord that when you do finally pass away from poverty malnutrition whatever under heaven might engulf you whole you will be ushered into god's rest that's the best thing you can ever hope for for yourselves south africa is is highly unlikely going to participate in the in the entirety of the tribulation just by, by mere virtue of its destruction very early in the tribulation do not say i do not warn you you have no fear of god i don't understand what you're doing you're sitting on my chest preventing me from speaking to other people as you're in these streets and you thoroughly think that this is a growing concern well like i said there is a conversation being had about you in heaven about how pompous you are because very soon a tsunami is going to knock you out it's that basic i'm signing out in christ's name Ken K. peace